Hello my friends, this video is going to be for the more advanced people in our audience. The goal here is to create a node red function in which we can upload a image or PDF or it really doesn't matter. In our case, it will be a JPEG image to your node red. Use the image content, convert it to a hex or base64 string and then save it to any place you want. In our case, it will be a text file, but it could also be a database and then gather again or get back the image from our text file and use it to create a new file, uh, which will be completely readable by the PC and which will be the same image that we have right here. So let's start right away. The node we're going to use here will be the upload node. If we go to manage palette, you can see I have here the node red contrib UI upload. This is what you're going to need to install. Other nodes are already set. So let's use the upload, set it into our project. I will assign it to a dashboard group, which I've already created. Then let's see and check how this data gets out from our upload function when we insert the image so we can really use it. Let's press deploy, open the dashboard and see as well like the upload appeared. So this worked and right here we need this vertical form image that is going to be our base image. Upload it, see the debug. As you can see, this image is quite big, so it has multiple parts. So in order to solve the problem of having so many messages, as you can see, all the information is stored in the payload. To solve this issue, we're going to use what is called a join node. You will find it by just type join. Join is right here. The join needs to be configured to manual. We want to get a buffer from this. So you, as you can see in here, it's already a buffer. We want it to also create a buffer in the end. So that's why we need to have it on manual. We don't want any joining character. This is really important. Don't put in anything because you will have extra characters and you won't be able to use it to create a new and correct file afterwards. So let's connect the join node connect again, it should only have now a msg.payload type. Uh, let's upload the same image again and see if this worked. And as you can see, we have a huge buffer, but only one. So we have successfully combined all the data from the chunks from our upload. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to convert this data into a format of string because this will not be uh, possible to save in an easy way. We're going to do that by adding a function. We, we are going to save it in base 64, but you can use pretty much any other encoding you want. Uh, we will type msg.payload and now equals, since this is already a buffer, we can just put msg.payload dot to string and then write base 64 in there. Once we've did that, we will get in the output a base 64 string and we can directly use this in our write file function, which is available under the storage section. Then the write file function, we need to give the path of our text file or if you use a database, this would be the place where you create your SQL request to put it into your database. We don't want to append, we want to overwrite the whole file. We don't want, this is again important, new line in payload because it will add it. I will put my path in here. And before we connect, as always, I suggest you to test what you did before. So let's connect the MSG payload debug node, see if we get a good base64 string out of this. 
So we will upload this again. Now I have some troubles with my trackpad. Now it works, perfect. Upload again. And as you can see here is a good base64 string that we can use to write into our file. So let's connect this. And right now we will save our data into this file. Deploy again, next step, test again, input this and we can go right away to our text file, which we already see there is some information in there. Let's open the text edit. And as you can see, the base 64 has been saved to this text file. Now we do the whole thing in reverse. Our goal is to create a new JPEG, which is called test.jpg, and which will be the same image as we uploaded. So first of all, this would be the place where you would put maybe your SQL request to get data, or you will also use a file, but in this case, a read file node. Add the same path that we added right here. So the same file will be used, of course. So what we are going to do now after we uh, inserted our uh, path in here, we're going to select a uh, output of a single UTF-8 string on encoding default. Don't be go, don't get confused. We saved. This is quite important and a bit confusing at the beginning. We are saving the image which is encoded right here from the upload. We get it as a buffer. We encode it to base64 but we will save this string because base64s are just some numbers which represent another uh, set of uh, parameters or set of numbers. And we encode this to base64 and then we generally, or basically we encode it again uh, by writing it into our file in whatever format the PC takes. So we need to get back the information first just as a string which is encoded as utf8 in this case and then we need to tell the computer hey no this is not a utf string we will use this to create a buffer again and to convert it back to the format that we can create the image on this is really important because if you work with different encodings you can easily lose certain informations of a file but as you can see it comes now out correctly as a base 64 string and what we need to do now is we need to write the function which will create out of this file a buffer Buffer is more standardized and is not, uh, yeah, it's not like this encoded. And we can do this by calling msg.payload equals buffer from msg.payload. And now we say what the, uh, what the underlined uh, encoding. So what's how this msg.payload is encoded. Let's create and add a debug in the end and test this again. And as you can see, we get right here a finished buffer. This is now the full image, which we can reuse again to write into a new file here you would basically have the point where you copy something from your database. As we said before, here we convert it to a buffer and now we're going to save it to a now non-existent file, but it will be test.jpg. So we will see if this works like this. So if I press here, it should create an image right here. And as you can see, if we switch back to the folder, we see that it worked. We can open this image. It is the same image. It worked perfectly fine. And we can use the data like this. So we can upload any image we want right here. We can 
save it temporarily or permanently into a text file or into a database. And once we need it, or once we want to save it to the system, we can just press this and it will appear right here. Thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions for videos, please just write them in the comment. Have a great day.